it's January 24th and this is the video log that takes 30,000 to a million I haven't made a video in a while it's been like three weeks or something like that I haven't moved to a new place you can see this is starting to be my the new office here <laughs> so um, after I take you through the account to show you all the uh, positions that I have on right now um, I might talk a little bit about the crazy volatile day that has happened today on Monday and um, after that I want to talk about how, what I'm trying to do with the account when it comes to the names that I'm going to be using for some of my uh, quote unquote wheel strategies or option selling strategies so and most of all I want to talk about my new favorite company here which is um, part of this new outlook that I'm trying to gravitate to which is Goldman Sachs so uh, if you want to hear about that, you can fast forward to you see me like this full blown on the screen. But um, if you want to sit through the account review, I'll, I'll show you right now. So oh, that's not it. So no, that's the Goldman Sachs. So this is my account here. So um, I'm sitting at one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, which is less than um, it was three weeks ago, and I'm probably not the only one that suffering I mean the the markets have been in a kind of a big correction here I'm amazed I'm only down 6.24 percent on the week month is looking like minus 3.78 three months minus 8.4 little painful but it's been a very um, volatile market and my account is kind of leveraged right so and I, and I also have some leaps so it goes up and down quite a bit uh, I'm trying to make a big move here, but it's just not happening. And I'm having to just keep managing the downside of the account, which is a little bit difficult. So you can see I, had, I was 201,000 at one point, dropped down to 177, then 192, and then all the way down to 170 or below, and then all the way back up to 2000, I mean 201,000 again, and now I'm back down to 175 or 177. I'm 175. So today was actually kind of a crazy day. Um, dropped all the way down to 162. So I was down 16 grand at one point today. And then the market decided to magically rally <laughs> to all the way, um, all my positions and all the way to 176. So it's been a crazy kind of a roller coaster way, but let me take you through the account. Here's my uh, new place here. Um, I saw the put against Goldman Sachs last week, and I actually profited off that. I got like 300 bucks or something like that, or 400. And then I decided to sell another uh, put option on Goldman Sachs. That so far, it's not working for me. But I actually don't mind accumulating 100 shares at 350. Um, maybe I can sell some calls on it. But currently, I'm losing quite a bit. Um, let me click on this real quick so you can see. So I'm actually down, you know, like $668 so far on this position. I sold it for $400, and it's currently valued um, at negative $1,068. What that means is basically um, that if I were to buy that, contract back I would have to pay that amount of money and I'd be losing six hundred dollars right I sell it for four hundred it's kind of like the opposite of if you're not familiar how this works it's kind of the opposite of uh, trading uh, stuff like buy and resell let's say you buy something cheap from uh, one person and you want to sell it for more to another it's kind of the opposite you sell the item first and then you buy it back or wait till it expires worthless that's kind of how it works so anyway, I'm down, you know, six hundred and sixty-eight dollars on this, so that's not cool. But okay, back to the account review. So I got, you know, Goldman Sachs options. Uh, I'm gonna scroll through them kind of quickly. So this is going to be the ticker. Then you have the strike price of the option. Then, oops, excuse me. Then you have whether it's a put or a call. You have the expiration date of the option, number of contracts, and whether it's a sell or a buy. So I'm just gonna scroll through. You can see the exact. Um, positions if you just pause the video player at any moment to try to figure it out the numbers on the right are just a daily change on top and then the uh, percentage change on the bottom 
Oh, okay. V VIP calls went up a little bit here. <laughs> 3,400% because it was $1. It's basically worthless. But some of these mis you know, mispricings happen just because there's just no liquidity in some of these contracts. But that can be um, a benefit because if you just set, you know, a buy or a sell order there and just wait for the liquidity to come, you can kind of, you know, profit from the fact that there's no liquidity. So it pays to wait. Okay, so these are the equity positions. I have you know Apple, which was down quite a bit today and only ended up negative one point six four percent. Ebix somehow managed to climb up to a positive territory. I don't know how, but JD is down. Uh, Vip shop, so Vip shop actually climbed up to almost par. I mean, down only one percent, which is incredible. That company I've been raving about for like two months, very undervalued. Uh, one of my favorites. And then we have Realty Income, Goldman Sachs, 25 share, shares, soon to be maybe 125. We'll see. I bought some more uh, Main Street capital here today. And then I have Visa. And then uh, Smith & Wesson actually ended up positive 6%. It was down in, during trading in the beginning of the day for the first half. And I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous um, because this is a very deep value company. And I didn't think that deep value was going to get hit with these corrections that much, but apparently it did. But then it decided to reverse course and end up up 6%. So crazy strong market here for this company today. Um, I like it. I have my call sold at 22.5. So if the stock price reaches... Twenty-two and a half dollars by March 18th. Then I will be automatically selling this. Probably won't reach that mark, but it could. And I don't mind selling it at that price. I don't want to hold on to it if it's too much about that. I think the company is worth about 20 bucks. So um, if I'm able to buy it underneath and sell over it, it's good for me. Okay, so I think that's the uh, account. All right, so. What was my topic here? Okay, um, so I'm in the office here, in the office. That was the account, very crazy day. Oh, um, so one of the main things I'm trying to do with the account now is I'm trying to figure out what the market leader is, what the most like, I don't wanna say prestigious, I don't wanna say efficient, but the company that has the biggest halo I'm trying to I'm actually starting to look at a halo as a bit of an asset so I mean and I'm also expanding my definition of a halo so what is an, a halo company it's one where um, the leader or the CEO of it is a well-known figure or the product has like such a huge record you know recognition value across the globe that it's hard to kind of displace so Normally my rule for Halo companies is that I don't short them. But now I'm trying to kind of like enter this Halo effect into the valuation of the company. And so I think that whenever a company develops some kind of reputation that it can be, you know, it can be um, not quantified, but it can be used <clears throat> to boost kind of the value of the, of the company and prevent it from big drawdowns because the company always just gets beat up by... Uh, either fanboys of the company or people that have just set their, their sights on it and will buy on any dip because they just think that the company is, you know, a market leader or are performing or just a really high quality name. So I'm trying to put, trying to figure out kind of a leader in each industry or um, halo, you know, effect company in each industry and try to just own that. I want the whole entire industry. I, I want something that's going to outperform, right? So here's what I've come up with, right? This is my, oops, this is my account here. So Apple, obviously in electronics, I mean, that's kind of unarguable. Like you're gonna have Apple. Um, and then, it was definitely not it. I'm looking to get in, get out of that company. Uh, so I've sold calls. So as soon as it reaches 35, I'm out. So this is arguable, right? I don't know what is gonna be the, the retail. I wanna capitalize on China's retail. So I don't know if JD is going to be the, the the leader there, but it looks like they're forming to be the leader. 
in Chinese retail, but uh, because I'm not sure, I also have um, Bip Shop, which could be argued that it's the discount leader, discount shop leader in uh, China, so I don't know. Oh, excuse me. I have two, I have two leaders, perhaps. And then I also have some Alibaba because, you know, they have like the cloud stuff and tech and all that going on for them in China as well. And they're really also undervalued. So I have a bunch of leaps for Alibaba. Hopefully they play out. Today they didn't do well. And moving on down the list, the realty income without a doubt, the most prestigious like monthly dividend real estate um, kind of REIT, I guess. So um, that's, you know, that's my one of my most secure positions. Goldman Sachs goes without saying uh, it's probably the most prestigious investment bank out there and one that somehow seems to always get ahead so I don't mind owning them at all and um, in fact they could be talking a little bit about Goldman Sachs in a second so Main Street Capital they're also a monthly dividend um, company but they focus on business loans and I think they're the, the probably the most Halo-ish um, company that does um, private loans to companies, private business loan company, and then Visa, arguably, you know, probably unarguably, the number one transaction company out there, probably rivaled by PayPal now, right? Because we got Venmo and all that stuff, but Visa is still the number one like transaction company in the world. Um, so I own a little bit of Visa, not too much. And this company, you know, Smith & Wesson, I'm looking to get out um, as well. I only bought it for value play, but um, I don't know that they're, you know, the leader is just that they make so much cash, it's hard not to own them um, relative to their stock price anyways. And at Didi, I just bought one share to see what would happen when they get finally delisted from um, the American exchange. I want to see what, how Robinhood would treat it. I'm guessing it just goes to OTC, which means, uh, you know, over-the-counter trading. Um, over-the-counter trading means, I guess you don't have to look at that anymore. Over-the-counter trading just basically means it's not through an exchange. Um, the stock becomes traded as, a you know, an ADR in interbank, right? So um, maybe brokerage trade amongst each other without checking through the exchange or banks trade it. Or, you know, basically it's kind of like, you know, it floats around, but uh, it's not really registered in any exchange. So some people don't like to trade like that in over-the-counter stocks. Some people don't think it's a problem at all, but, um, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm sure that OTC trading will be available. I don't know that Robinhood allows stocks that are listed on Hong Kong exchange. If somebody knows that information, please let me know. I know that uh, Tencent is traded over the counter and Rob on Robinhood, uh, but I don't know if they actually go into the Hong Kong exchange and Hang Seng, um, not Hang Seng. I forget what it was called, the Hong Kong exchange, but it's probably HK something. Um, <clears throat> but let me know, I haven't actually seen uh, a stock on Robinhood the trades on the Hong Kong exchange. So if you know that answer, let me know in the comments, all right? Um, so Goldman Sachs. Okay, so Goldman is really impressive. All we gotta do is just pull up the FinViz on Goldman and you can see why I'm so impressed. So um, first of all, you can't see on the left here, but it's 2.33% dividend, it says. I see something else on Robinhood and something else yet on like Yahoo, but Anyway, the dividend's around 2%. Uh, most impressive thing here is the price to earnings ratio is 5.79. And that's real. I mean, um, you know, they leverage a lot and they make a lot of earnings. Um, so that is a real earning. I, me and everybody else and their mother expects that the earnings ratio will go down. So this is pretty realistic here as well. But even if they make half the money they made last year, right? Even if they make half the money, their PE will be like, you know, a 10. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is still great. Still great for such a prestigious bank that uh, that does really well in the markets, you know. And there's a lot of trading volatility. I actually think they even do better. So 
I think they might even have a stronger year this year than than 2021. So all their metrics look pretty good. Of course, the margins are just astronomically off the charts here. Um, some of the problems with Goldman Sachs is that they do like to pay a lot for their people, so they pay off a lot of bonuses and you know their salaries go up at crazy amounts each year. So if you really want to make money, you go to Goldman, right? But it's usually justified. However, that's becoming like their main expense. I mean, people is just kind of the resource, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but um, at some point it's hard to contain. Like nobody ever gets a pay cut, you know? Maybe you don't get as big of a bonus next year, but no one's gonna take a pay cut on their salary. So if um, they start making less money, then, you know, there's a percentage of the earnings, their payroll becomes like exponentially bigger. So that's one of the main concerns people have with Goldman, but I don't think they're going to be going backwards. I mean, I think that um, they're really good at what they do, and even if they have a disappointing quarter or so, like last one, I think they'll bounce back, especially with this volatility here that's happening. Um, they're really good at profiting from it, in my opinion. So, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I like the company. I think it's got a halo effect. Um, so... I'm going to try to own it, even though I own a lot of my stuff on margin right now. Oh, do you want to see? Check this out. We're going to the, uh, oh, the account, sorry. Investing, there you go. So this is the investing tab. Got margin 70,872. So it's quite substantial, right? It's 28.8%. Of the account here total money under management here is 245,246 almost now I really have to start worrying if this percentage goes to like 40 or 50 because then I'm in real big danger um, but thankfully it's still at 30 even after some of these big drops Right now, I'm in a little bit of survival mode. I really don't want to lose any of my positions at this point. So I don't want to have to sell because, you know, I get margined out or whatever. Um, if you're interested in the positions, here they are by total return. Apple, obviously, number one, has been the core of my position for a while. And then Realty Income is also the second kind of core position. So uh, I've held them for a long time, and that's why you see the uh, total returns. Most of the stuff... In the account, I kind of trade often, fairly often, maybe, you know, quarterly or half biannually or whatever. So um, it's absent, you know. I don't haven't hold, held anything really that long except these first five names, actually. Everything else is new and besides Ebex, maybe, and um, I'm not doing well in my recent trades, but hopefully bouncing back. This is... Uh, sorted by equity. Apple is the biggest holding in my account, and then it's Ebix, and then Vipshop. Sitting pretty at $31,500, and then it's JD. Alright, I've updated you on the account, and then I uh, talked a little bit about what I'm trying to do with the account, how I'm going to concentrate just to like my favorite, I think, market leaders or most halo affected companies and keep those and maybe perhaps sell call options against the ones that I uh, don't care much as much about or ones that I'm trying to you know reduce the position of when, try, when I'm trying to rebalance or whatever but that's the new strategy here with um, when it comes to the names that I'm using I'll probably still have a pet project or two like rib shop is a pet project um, Smith & Wesson is a pet project. Ebix has been a very long pet project right now. And these pet projects are taking up, you know, like a third or almost half of the account right now. So um, I have to try to unwind them. But unfortunately, the markets have not been generous or favorable uh, to help me unwind these positions. So hopefully soon. We'll see. So anyway, that's my account review. I haven't made a video in a while, so hopefully this updates everything. And I also hope that you all are making more money than I am because I've been losing right this year. So hopefully it bounce back and I'll talk to you perhaps 
next week or maybe sooner i have a little bit of time right now so maybe i'll make a few more videos all right i think that's uh wraps up for today peace